Hi guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We are super excited to talk about raised bed gardening in small spaces. And in case you guys don't know, my name's Carrie. This and is I'm Dale. Yep, this is Dale. You guys probably are more familiar with me talking to him behind the scenes because <laughs> usually during these webinars, he's like sitting right over there, and I and I'm always telling him, "Okay, next slide." <laughs> so we thought it'd make things a little better if I'm just like right here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this way we can talk and you guys can hear him talk too. Um, cause a lot of times like he'll, he'll mention something or say something about the winner or something like that at the end. So yeah, it'll be fun. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be talking about raised bed gardening and this is pretty much all that we do. We do a lot of raised bed gardening. So I am really excited to talk about this today and I would love to hear from you guys too in the chat say hi and um, let us know where you guys are gardening from and um, and if you guys already have some raised beds and all of that, I would love to hear what you guys are, are doing in your gardens. Um, we are in zone seven in Oklahoma City and yeah, we currently have a lot of land, so not really small space anymore. But whenever we first started gardening, um, and within just like a few years ago, we had, um, we had a traditional backyard, which, yep, this was it. Thank you, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this was, um, after a few years after we had started gardening. Um, so that was our backyard. Um, yep, this was at the very beginning, this was our backyard, um, and it worked really well, um, for us. And then we ran out of space and had to move to bigger <laughs> land, but we could have been, um, we found a lot of ways to make use of our small space and to grow a whole bunch of food. And we grew a lot on just a simple patio also. So we're going to talk about a bunch of different ways to go about doing that today. Next slide. So, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yes. So I do want to make sure that I mention Make sure you guys stay tuned to the very end of the webinar for our giveaway. We are going to be having two winners today. So if you guys were are on our social media or on our email list, um, if you're not, make sure that you subscribe. Um, we have been promoting for you guys to send us pictures of your own small spaces and so that way we can use your guys's pictures for inspiration and kind of talk through what we would do in some of your spaces. So we did go through and select a few of your guys's images that we're going to be using and talking about. And from those, we're going to be giving away a $50 gift card for Park Seed, which is awesome. So it'll help you with your small space gardens and hopefully get you set up and all of that. Um, and then also from the people who are attending here today, you we're going to be selecting one winner for a one year premium app subscription, which is awesome. We do, um, I mean, there's a lot of premium features. I, I can never remember all of them. <laughs> you can add a you limited plans better. to your garden. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we also, so we have this my garden feature where you can log and track the plants in your garden in our app. And for free, you get three plants. And with premium, you get unlimited. We have Growbot, which is an AI chatbot. Mm -hmm. it, um, if you haven't paid attention to AI, it's come a long way in the past six months. We're really excited about where it's going. And this is kind of our first step into having it. There's a calendar view that makes it easier to see all of your plantings at a glance. And I love the calendar view. Uh, takes away all the ads out of the app. There's a big <laughs> pink banner at the top if, if you don't have premium. So it takes that away. Um, and we're going to be adding more and more features. So. Mm -hmm. So yay. So one lucky winner will be getting that as well. So make sure you guys do stay tuned to the very, very end. And we will make, uh, we will select a winner randomly from all of you guys. Okay. So let's jump right in and talk about raised bed gardening. So why would you even consider doing raised bed gardening? So raised bed gardens. Um, so I always say there's so many different pros to having raised beds. Um, especially if you guys have small space that you are dealing with. Um, it's really good for a lot of things. Um, soil quality, because you can do a lot of um, your own amendments to the soil. 
So we make all of our own own soil here, but you you don't necessarily have to make your own, but you can amend it however you want. It's easier to add fertilizers, all of that. Um, so it's really great for that. Um, also better drainage, which especially for smart pots, which if you guys aren't familiar with smart pots, I'm going to be showing lots of pictures later on here too. But actually in that image that I have on the screen right there, that purple, um, raised bed right there you can see it's a fabric raised bed which is a smart pot and those are super great at, especially for drainage so if you over water or if you're getting a whole bunch of rain in um it's really great because it will wash away the excess water and you won't just let it like it won't just sit in the water um which is a lot of the traditional like plastic ones do um, so there's definitely better drainage in a lot of these ones that we're going to be talking about today. And then also decreased weeds, which if you are like me, you hate fighting weeds. I know I definitely do. Um, that's probably one of my least favorite parts of gardening. I think. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so raised bed gardens, definitely less weeds to deal with. So definitely a pro right there. I'll throw in a couple other pros too. I yeah. think, you know, with, we're talking small space gardening, something like a smart pot opens up a lot more opportunities because if you have just like a concrete patio, then it gives you a way to have a raised bed directly on top of there. And they're also portable. You can move them around. Some of the heavier ones uh, are, are harder to move <laughs> around, but especially the smaller ones, they're very portable. And that's another, yeah, another part of having a Yeah, we've done bed. that a lot too. Like if we have <clears throat> a frost coming in late, like if we have like a late freeze and we need to move in tomatoes or peppers or something like that, it's just easy to go into the garden, grab what we need and bring it inside or into the garage. And there's one year we had like our entire bathtub lined with <laughs> pots. Like, yeah. So there's a lot of really good things. Um, and then there are some cons too that people sometimes bring up um, about like limited root depth. Um, for this, I always recommend either making sure that you get a plenty big enough pot um, or container and then um, or if smart pots too, um, because smart pots, you're, you're better at explaining this the, with the, the smart pot root growth because I know they, they do not ever get root bound. Yeah, so with a traditional like plastic pot, like you may have seen, like or just the containers you get from the store, if you buy a plant from the store and then you see that's root bound. And if you don't know what that means, it's basically whenever the roots start circling around the pot and they get really thick and fibrous and they don't really do much good anymore at that point. In smart pots, that doesn't happen. Once the roots hit the side of the pot, they stop and they continue to take in nutrients. And you're not going to find a smart pot that has root bound. And that's one of the biggest reasons why we switched two smart pots away from plastic our first year you know we just we tried just the standard plastic containers and stuff and we did not have very much success with things like tomatoes that we tried to grow in our patio mm -hmm. and it wasn't until we switched to smart pots that we started having success with with smaller containers especially um you know we tried the whole five gallon bucket thing and all that i'm just i like doing everything diy <laughs> so I, we tried all of those things and just nothing worked as well as these fabric raised beds. So we still like to use these, uh, even though we have a large garden, they still have a big purpose in our garden for a number of things that we grow in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We love our smart pots. <laughs> next slide. Yeah, next slide, let's do it. Okay, so first of all, selecting a location to garden in. So maybe you're limited and you only have like a deck or patio or a small little area. But if you have like a few different options, a few things to consider would be the sunlight. So first of all, depending on what you're going to grow, you want to make sure to figure out, does it require full sun, part sun, shade? Um, and our app can make that super simple too. Um, and our From Seed to Spoon app. It'll show exactly what it needs. So right here, like for example, in spinach, it says full sun to part shade. Like it can tolerate some shade um, if you want to throw some at it. Um, but yeah, so it'll say all of that. So you want to make sure to take in account some sunlight and then access to water as well. So do you have a hose nearby or is it next to your house where you can just bring like a jug of water out to water it? You just want to make sure that you're not having to walk too far to water it for sure. 
um, or if you have like a broken hose or something along those lines. You just want to make sure that you have easy access to water and it's convenient to you as well. So right outside your door, fantastic. That's that's what we had right here, um, right outside of our, that was our kitchen right there through that door. And then um, when you walked through there, we had all sorts of different herbs right there in containers that we would harvest from and, and we would just take it directly into the kitchen. So if we see it, like I always say, like if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. But if you see it, if you walk out there and you see it, you're going to be way more likely to use it. <laughs> Thank you. This is the best we've ever done in keeping up with slides. <laughs> I know. Usually I'm just like, okay, next slide. <laughs> um, yeah, so there are several different types of raised beds. Um, I'm going to talk about a few of our favorites there's a lot of other ones, but like Dale had mentioned earlier, we aren't a huge fan of like the plastic ones or even the buckets, things like that. Like these are the ones that we found to be successful for us. So these are the ones that we're going to talk about today. Um, so of course the fabric ones, the smart pots, that's what we had already talked about earlier. There's um, a picture of some smart pots right there that has some Swiss chard growing beautifully in it. I love it. Um, so smart pots, again, I know we've talked a lot about them. Is there anything we haven't mentioned about smart <laughs> pots? They come in all sorts of different sizes. Um, so I think all the way from what, three gallon to like a huge 100 gallon round raised bed. Um, so there's a little bit of everything and for everybody, which is great. And on all shapes too, they don't just have round ones. They have like long skinny ones too, that you can put like up against like a wall or a fence line or something along those lines. And um, those are called their, their long raised beds. And those ones work really well too, especially for small spaces. If you only have a space like up against a, um, like a house or up against a fence or something along those lines. And then these metal ones, um, the Vigo gardens are awesome. We just actually started carrying those at park seed and we're trying them out for the first time, but they are fantastic. They are super strong, super durable. They're supposed to last like pretty much forever. And they have like rust free and all that. Like they're amazing. <laughs> it's super exciting. Um, but yeah, there's all sorts of different sizes. The great thing about them is you can um, do different sizes. They, they come in like these panels that you put together. So you can arrange it in whichever shape that, and size that you would want to do. Um, and what fits into your space. So again, a lot of benefits for that because you can kind of make it your own shape and do your own thing there and it'll last for a very long time, which is awesome. Got a great comment here about raised beds too, I wanna yeah. share. So this is another great reason to use raised beds. If, if you have poor soil, so if you have extremely clay soil or extremely sandy soil, then you can use raised beds and you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to improve that direct soil. Absolutely. Um, they also mentioned uh, hugo culture, which is a great way to do things too. And they're incorporating that into it by laying a, a layer of straw to hold moisture at the bottom of the raised bed. And that's another thing that I think it's worth mentioning is, I guess we'll get to the soil mix here in a bit, but there's some ways to save money on soil mix by doing things like this as well with your raised beds. So I want to call it this great comment we had here. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Cammy. We've got another question here about smart pots, about what, what plant to grow in different sizes. Oh, we actually have a feature of our app. Yes, we do. <laughs> for each plant, you can go into it and it'll tell you which size uh, smart pot will work best for that. Uh -huh. um, and also, like, I feel like when in doubt, you can always, if you can go larger, do that. And they have like the huge round raised beds too. But yeah, in our app, it'll say like three gallon, five gallon, seven gallon and all that. And it incorporates which one to use. So definitely check that out. And just know that just because you can grow one, like you can grow a tomato in a three gallon smart pot, we've done it, but it's a lot more work and you're not going to have as much success as if it's in a 20 gallon smart pot because there's a lot more room for error because yeah. that smart pot's going to hold more moisture and nutrients and everything else. Whereas with the three gallon smart pot, if you forget to water for a week, you know, you might be in trouble because there's no... So extra water hanging around for it to pull from. Yeah. So we always promote the, or encourage you guys to plant the sizes that are going to be most successful for you guys that we've had the most success in. So you'll see what our recommendations are in the app. A question here from James about metal raised beds leaking contaminants into the soil. 
I'm, I think I'd be more concerned about some of the wood that's used, like the treated woods and things like that, than I would be about the metal raised beds. Um, I will say, so these ones, cause I actually talked to them. I had a phone call with, um, with the, Mar- uh, ah, with the people that build it, um, the Vigo gardens and they, told me like everything that goes into it. And there was nothing at all concerning about it. Like nothing is supposed to leach in, even though they have like rust free um, painting on it and stuff like that. Like there, there was nothing that was concerning at all for doing like edibles and things like that. I'm going to paste in the description on the, there's a, there's a whole bunch of information about what they use here that I'm going to paste in. It's too much to read. So <laughs> check out the chat and, uh, and you can see more about what they're, what they're using on I mean, those. You can pop everything. the link in too, so they can see the whole thing as yep. well. That's a good idea also. <laughs> <laughs> I think I put a link to the broad category for them, but here's the product for this one I'm pulling from as well. Okay. And then, um, were there any other questions about it before we moved to wood? Um, no, okay. that's, that's all we've got so far. Okay, so, um, and then of course, there's also the wood raised beds too. That's what we actually started with uh, whenever we first started gardening. And we have a picture of, this is us in our garden, with some elevated raised beds. And we built these first. These are super great if you have like, uh, you know, knee issues or something along those lines and you're not as mobile as before, it's a good option for you. We have now found that, putting them just, just building the boxes and putting them on the ground works better than having them on legs. Cause the legs only lasted what, like three years, probably. I'm not much of a craftsman. That's I will say true. that. Um, I, hey, you're getting better. I build software better than I build real <laughs> things. Um, but the biggest issue we had with them was that, uh, they were hard to keep warm in the winter and then they were hard to keep cool in the summer because, you know, there was no insulation from the earth mm-hmm. below them. So that's why we ultimately ditched them. I th- I still think they have a great use as a salad garden to be on a patio or something where um, you're only going to have it in the spring or something like that. You just but you know where we were back then and kind of where we still are is we like to grow year round, and there's not a great option for that. But for the seasonal garden, it, it's still it's still a great option. Yeah, and um, and yeah, so we just we do a lot of just wood perimeters in the ground and then we can fill that in with our soil and all that so that way i have a raised bed still but some structure and on the ground and i know we were talking a little bit about soil earlier um so this is a huge benefit of raised bed gardening because you can either make your own soil or you can purchase your own too. So you can either way that you want to do it, um, you know exactly what's going to be in it, which is great. Um, my favorite, well, our favorite soil <laughs> mix is the Mel's mix, which comes from the square foot gardening method. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with square foot gardening method, um, you definitely need to check that out, especially if you have a um, small space. Um, because it'll help to, to, um, grow as much as you can into just a small space. Um, and then this is the mixture that they came up with to provide optimal growing conditions and all of that with growing as much veggies as possible. Um, so they do a mixture of three different things and that's it. So it's a mixture of compost, peat moss or coconut core and vermiculite and just mixing all those together and put and using that in a raised bed mix. Uh, it works really great. Um, now for compost, you can either like do your own compost or you can purchase compost. Um, I mean, however you want to go about the, the compost section. If you're making a bunch of raised beds, it's going to take a while to make your own compost. Yeah. Um, and it's going to take a lot of space to make a lot of compost. So you're probably going to have to buy compost in bulk. That's what we had to do a lot early on. Um, in Oklahoma, there's a lot of places that make compost and sell it in bulk where you can take a truck and they'll fill up your truck and you go home. And that was a really great workout I used to get all the time when mm-hmm. we lived in the city. Now I'm spoiled and have a tractor and a trailer and all that. But <laughs> um, but that's one thing that, you know, if you're if you're looking to make your own compost, that's one of those things you might want to start doing now, but not anticipate being able to use it for a while. You can also I want to mention this Mel's mix can get expensive. It's only really required for the top eight inches of soil. 
So if you have a foot tall raised bed, then, you know, that bottom four inches, you can put something else like, as mentioned earlier, straw or wood chips or um, kitchen scraps, you know, like you can like start composting in place directly there. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do to save money on, on that as well. And I will say too, like we were talking to um, the, the, well, the Square Foot Gardening Foundation, um, probably la- was that last year we talked to with them, um, but they had recommend too, cause they, they recognize too, that it can get expensive and it's typically the vermiculite part that can get expensive and sometimes really difficult to find as well. Um, so they recommended if you had issues finding vermiculite to just substitute more compost for it. So that's definitely something that you can do. Great question here from Tara. So you can reuse the soil um, from year to year. You just want to add uh, fresh compost in every season. So every spring and every fall. Um, and then depending on what's growing there, if you have a perennial, you may need some more in the summer, depending on what it is. Again, the app will help you with all of this for each plant. But uh, you can you know, keep using it and then just, just add some compost. And then Michelle has a, a comment here too as well that I want to, I want to address. So you, you can also get uh, compost from the city. I do recommend testing it if you get compost from the city um, because you don't know what's going into that. There's a lot of um, yard scraps and things that are being brought in that may be treated with chemicals that last a long time. And we had a situation early when we started gardening where um, we had compost that was contaminated with an herbicide and it killed all my tomatoes. And I was so upset. It was our first year, I think, and our second year. Yeah, I think it was our second, yeah. It was devastating. So make sure you test your compost. We have a video that shows. How yeah, to do we do. You well. should pull up that video. Like yeah. It. It's, it, it's a really good video um, that shows him just going through um, and how to test it. Um, and it's, I mean, it's really easy how to do it. So, okay. He's pasting it in now. It's in there. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, great little, com- great comment here. So the space between your raised beds to make compost using strip composting. This is oh. what we did too, where we would have wood chips between all the mm-hmm. raised beds. And then every, at the end of the season, I would scrape those wood chips up into a compost pile. A lot of it was already composted, bring in mm-hmm. fresh wood chips and then put them down. Now wood chips are something that we we feel very safe getting from our local city compost facility because it was a tree a few weeks ago. Trees don't really get sprayed with herbicides. So it's not really a concern. Uh, when you're just dealing with wood chips, it's when it's the finished compost product that, that I get concerned about. All right, next okay, slide. Next slide. Okay, so watering. There is a lot of different ways that you can go about watering your raised beds. So we have done different methods. So first of all, I will point out up here, this is our sun playing in the water, but (laughs) um, we had made our own PVC drip irrigation, which was awesome and worked terrific. We absolutely loved it. Um, Now it only, we were only able to do probably about two raised beds at a time with this method, but that worked great for us at the time. And probably for you guys too, if you're going to be growing in smaller spaces, it's going to be something that you might look into, into building. And we have a video that I'll have him when he gets back, I'll have him post in, into there, um, how we built the strip irrigation, but it really wasn't difficult. We even had help with the kids. They went through and helped us do it all. Um, and it was a fun little project. Um, you can also do just the regular drip irrigation hose throughout the raised beds, um, of course, or sprinklers. Um, I know a lot of people always mention to like, Um, concerns with sprinklers about watering from overhead. Um, How I always view it is if, um, especially if you do it in the morning, it's better. Um, But as long as you are watering, that's going to be the most important thing to do. So if your only option is a sprinkler, give it water at least. Um, So there's a lot of different ways that you can go through and water. Um, And then again, I want to point out in our app, we have a section on how much water different plants require. So for different plants, they're going to have slightly different requirements, especially for things like rosemary versus like tomatoes and um, spinach up here. Like they're all going to be slightly different. Um, So our uh, app will help guide you through knowing just a little bit about like um, what types of water they require.
Okay, and I wanna talk about vertical growing. Vertical growing is so important, especially if you have a small space and you are working with raised beds. Vertical growing is the way to maximize your growing space. And it also looks absolutely amazing. I love it. So these are my favorite vert vertical gardens that we have, which are just, they're super simple to make, um, but they look amazing. We do a cattle panel. And then we support each side of the cattle panel with some T posts into the ground. And then we just simply zip tie them together. Um, and then we just arch the cattle panel over and we grow all sorts of different things along these trellises. We do beans, especially a lot, beans and peas, along with things like vine. You can do anything of them. Um, we've even done like vining watermelon before. Um, now, obviously not the huge watermelons and um, we've done like the little smaller snack size ones. Um, oh yeah, I see. I see somebody said cucumbers are great to grow vertically. Yes, absolutely. Cucumbers are great to grow, um, up trellises and, um, pretty much like anything that grows vertical. Fantastic. These are my favorites. I love them. Just ask him. Like I make him build them all the time. She loves arches. She's <laughs> a do. sucker for arches. I do. We built our them. house. She had to put an arch everywhere she could. <laughs> um, yeah, I just love, I, they look so pretty, especially when they're all filled out with plants and greenery. And then, oh, in this picture up here on the right, um, you'll see like one of my favorite things to do is to put um, hanging pots up there too with flowers. So it looks so pretty. Plus it'll help like bring in beneficials into your garden because there's so many like bees and butterflies and hummingbirds and things like that, that really like those flowers right there. And then they'll stick around and help to pollinate all the other plants that you have around. So it's great. It all works really good. <laughs> Next slide. Yeah. I have a bunch of different pictures of vertical growing here. Um, so again, this is the arch um, the arch trellises too, but this one is instead of having to go and assemble all the pieces yourself, um, Vigo Gardens actually has all has one that they that they sell that you can have all of the pieces for, which is great. So if you have those Vigo Garden, it has it all me measured out perfect and aligned in there. Um, so that is a fantastic way to go about doing it too. Um, so definitely check those out. Go to the next slide. He's managing the, the chat also, so he's multitasking over here. <laughs> um, and other things that you can do that we do a lot of in our gardens is just putting like cattle panels on their sides, like um, in the in these pictures that we have here. And then we grow either like peas or beans or again, like cucumbers, melons, things like that um, along that line of the cattle panel. Um, and this works fantastic as well. Um, and one of them over here, we actually had a raised bed and then we planted because we had really good soil again right next to it because we had all the wood chips and everything. We were essentially composting in place there. Um, so we grew just on the outside of our raised bed and grew up that. So yeah, you can do it in so many different ways. You can do a lot with T posts and cattle panels. Yes. Yeah. So much. <laughs> and then a few other things too. Um, these are ones we should pull up links for these as well. Cause, um, these are in, um, these are available at park also. So that bean tower over here on the left is probably one of my favorite things to grow beans up and it looks really cool. I wish I had a great picture of it. Um, fully filled out with beans. I will take one this year cause it's going to look great. Um, it looks awesome. So I just planted the beans along in that circle right there and they just grew up the string up to the top. And it was so cool. It was just a tower full of beans. So if you have just a small space and you want to grow a lot of pole beans, this is a fantastic way to do it. I absolutely love it. It worked terrific. And then also these potato or potato. Wow. The tomato cages here in the middle are fantastic. They're probably my favorite tomato cages because um, I feel like those round ones always seem to break for me at least. Um, these ones haven't yet, which they're they seem super strong, super durable. They also collapse down. 
Yeah. Which is so great. easy storage too, which is huge mm-hmm. for us. So in the off season, we don't have to like just have a an area of like the circle ones just like stacked and taking up a whole bunch of space. Like we just have them all like folded up and yeah. Just make sure you're doing it for the right kind of tomato because you you only want to do this for like a bush tomato or mm-hmm. a determinate tomato. For a vining tomato, you're going to, want to do like the cattle panel trails or something like that that we showed. Yeah, for sure. And then also you can save 15% on all of these products with the code SPOON15. I'll put that in chat again. If I can type right. <laughs> yeah, so make sure that you guys are checking these out. They're all my favorite things. Um, and then over here on the right, the, this is a cucumber trellis that they have. Um, it's kind of cool. It co- grows in like a triangle shape. Um, so again, it's really, uh, it's a really good space saver by just growing vertically, getting it off the ground as well, instead of growing on the ground, um, and having them just like spiral around. (laughs) Okay. So we have a lot, um, well, not a lot. I, I pulled up a few. I didn't want to do a whole bunch of them, but I did want to give some examples from you guys that you guys sent in. And thank you so much to everybody for sending in your pictures to us. Um, I thought we would spend a few minutes going over just a couple of the pictures that were sent in and talk a little bit about um, about them. So I'm going to, let's see if I can figure this out up here to we're share. trying something new here yeah so well i guess I'll, I'll just wait until the until we get to okay. that one before i do it okay No, it looks great. Yeah, I think it looks great. I, I loved it. I was I was really happy about it. So I was like, oh. Um, and then over to the right, we had a another picture sent in to us um, from Zone 8. And this was West Facing. And she sent us in. She was growing some tomatoes and peppers and things like that. This was from last summer that she was growing all of that. And um, with the direction that it's facing, I thought that was that was a great use of her small space. She's using some smart pots and making use of the small space that she has and growing on concrete and still managing to grow some food, which I thought was fantastic. Okay, and then I thought that we would talk about this one too because I wanted to give some suggestions here to Janet. Um, So Janet is growing in zone 9B and she actually just had this raised bed built and on the side of her house, it is 34 feet by two feet. And so she was asking for some suggestions on things that we would grow in that area for her. Um, So I I know you had some really good suggestions. So it looked like this area was next to an area that she wants to this is an area you want to look nice, right? There's a lot of landscaping around it. There's all that stuff going on. So my first thought here was to mix in some perennial herbs. So that way you'll have some year round stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. So some rosemary, some thyme, sage, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Oregano. Did I say oregano yet? No. Um, All of those interplanted. And then What I would interplant with them, I would treat this as like a seasonal annual garden and focus on things that look the best. So in my mind, in the spring, that's going to be kale, Swiss chard, mustard greens, lettuces. All of those things are going to look really pretty. They're going to look really nice there and have them interplanted between the herbs. That'll Mm -hmm. help with companion planting and with pest prevention. And then... You know, in the summer, um, you could do a mix of different things, too. Like you might want to put some flowers there, maybe some marigolds you could throw in. 
you know, some zinnias if you want to have some height there or something like that. But that's what I was thinking I would do yeah. with that space. The biggest thing, so it looks like the sun is setting um, like at the, at the top of the picture. So I, I would just recommend making sure to keep like the bigger, taller plants probably towards the front of the picture over here. Um, so that way it doesn't shade out any of the other plants. So if you wanted to grow something larger, um, I might try and do it on that side of the bed too. But thank you, Janet, for sending that in. I hope that helps. Then for our next real life example, we're going to try and do something here. So oh, yes. see if okay. this is our first time trying this. So bear with us. See, we'll see how this works. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, I can it's working find, so far. there it is. Okay. So okay. I'm going to drag and drop exactly what I would do here because this was such a fantastic example. And I absolutely loved it of, um, of a, like a blank slate. I want to grow a garden here. I don't know what to do. So I thought this was a great example. And I actually managed to get some cutouts here of smart pots <laughs> and <laughs> I was going to use them as um, examples of what I would do in this area. Um, so what we have here um, is I, what looks like to me um, is that there are two different doors. So I'm guessing that this side is his and this side might be cut in half and this might be another um, so if that's the case, like I was saying, maybe we can line like right here with some multiple smart pots and that way you can grow a lot of different things down this line and then probably put a couple more over here as well. And then these ones, I was thinking possibly a raised bed in the back over there, there's different sizes um, that you can grow of these. There's like a junior size, depending on the size of this area right here. They have a junior size, which is like 15 gallons, um, which would be great right here if um, it's not super big or they go up to, or that, well, that's a mini. And then they go up to like 50 gallons or 100 gallons if you can fit that. Um, I thought that would be great to put something right there. And then um, since this was west facing, like this is going to be getting full sun right here. So we could pretty much just grow whatever, whatever he wanted there, which, um, I, I mean, if you wanted like tomatoes, peppers, things like that, because you're going to be getting a lot of sun, um, this area back here where this purple smart pot would be, would be getting just a little bit of shade. Cause you can kind of see like it's getting shaded right here. So if we did have something that we wanted to have some shade in, you could plant that in the back, right back there. Um, but if this was mine, that's, uh, that's kind of what I would, what I would do. <laughs> that I worked out it. pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's see if I can get back now. Yay. I got it. Okay, cool. Awesome. So hopefully that helped you guys. Um, I wanted to, to just, um, do a few examples of different types of pictures that you all sent in. And thank you so much um, for everybody that did send in their pictures. I think they, they were fantastic. I love seeing them. Um, and so now let's go through and do um, a few more questions or do we want to do a giveaway? Let's go and announce a giveaway for the $50 uh, Park Seed gift card. Okay, go for it. Okay, and it was, um, you drew it before. Do you remember who you drew? You were supposed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you go draw. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, you go draw. And um, so for the $50 gift card for the Park Seed, it's going to be awesome. That It was for one of, the, um, one of the people who sent in one of their pictures to us. And um, so hey. it's going to be awesome. Kentucky Procedure. Kentucky Preacher's Wife. Okay. So that was this one right here. Yay. Congratulations. Um, so if you are watching right now, um, you can send us a message. I know we had a thread going whenever you sent this to us on Instagram. So um, you can either me message us on there or I'll reach out to you too if you didn't get a chance to, to join us live. And now we'll take some of your questions and then um, we'll pick a, we'll, we'll draw a winner out of the, out of the questions here. So a uh, question here, 
great one. How do you keep animals out of the garden? Mm. So we have a section in the app that's specifically built to help with this. So in the app, there's a critters button at the very top. And if you tap on that, it'll have guides for each one of the things you've listed here. Um, a motion activated sprinkler works on a lot of different things. Um, if you haven't heard of those before, they are, they're pretty awesome. It's also fun to prank your kids with them. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then some of these other things like groundhogs, they're typically going to attack from below. So if you have like a hardware mesh in the bottom of your raised bed, that will keep them out. Yeah. Generally doing these raised beds will help with a lot of those mm -hmm. issues. The groundhogs, squirrels, rats, possum, like a lot of that. But check out the critter section in the app because that's what it's built for is to help with that. Yeah. And I did do a webinar too. A few, it's probably been a few months ago, but I do, I do these webinars all the time, but I did a webinar that was based just on pests. So you might want to check that out too. Um, Cause it was going, um, going over like every single pest. So <laughs> like pretty much, I feel like it was, I mean, I'm sure that there were pests that I didn't cover, but I covered a lot of pests in there and then answered a lot of questions too. So you might find that helpful. Um, next question we have is any tips for new gardeners? So um, don't start too big is one tip I would definitely give. Don't, don't uh, let your first season be about experimenting and learning. Um, grow things you actually eat, things you want to use in yeah. the kitchen. That's probably the biggest tip I can give. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I will second that. Don't stake all your hopes on tomatoes because they're hard to grow. Um, make sure you grow some stuff that's pretty easy to grow too, like lettuce or spinach or herbs to help with your confidence. Well, and I will say too, if you did want to grow tomatoes, try growing the easier ones. So start with things like the cherry tomatoes because they're a lot easier to grow than the larger ones typically. Um, just because there's a lot more time that things can go wrong with if you're growing a tomato out to be really large rather than small. So the smaller ones are going to be a lot simpler. Um, question here about watering in the, in the, in the winter. Um, so unfortunately in the winter, you, you just got to hand water. But the good news is you don't have to do it near as often, usually like every three to four weeks for us in the winter. And that's in Oklahoma where we can have days that get up in the 60s, 70s. We'll have 80s in January. It's wild here. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, that is just kind of what you have to do in the winter is just go back to hand watering. But we're typically not growing near as much in the winter either. Yeah. So it's not as overwhelming. There's also no weeds to deal with or any of that stuff that you have to, you know, a lot of times when I go out there to water, I end up picking weeds for an hour because that's I get distracted and there's weeds. Um, a question about slugs. So there's a really nice yeah. trick you can use with slugs where you just pour some beer into a little saucer and, uh, and that's all you got to do. Yeah. I just put it next to the area you have issues in. And the next morning you'll see a lot of slugs. Uh, favorite herb to grow as a companion. Oh, plant. great. Uh, basil would definitely be mine. Um, I love basil because it is, I mean, it's amazing and it smells really good. <laughs> um, my favorite is cinnamon basil. Um, but I always grow this next to like my tomatoes and peppers, and it actually helps to improve the flavor as well as repel certain pests and things like that. So it has a lot of really good benefits. So basil is definitely mine. I definitely agree. Basil is pretty awesome. I think rosemary is my favorite herb, probably just because of how I like to just go hug our rosemary plant. It's really <laughs> calming. It smells really nice. It's like uh it's a very, very soothing thing. So I'm, I'm best. I'm, I think out of all of our plants, the rosemary is probably my best friend. I like it. Um, fire ants. Fire Ooh. ants can be tough. Um, what we've done in the past is to take boiling water and to pour it over the ant mound, but they're just going to move somewhere else. So it's just kind of whack a mole until they're outside of your property or somewhere <laughs> where they're not bugging you. Um, not bugging you, Alex. <laughs> if there's two ant mounds, you can take a shovel, take a scoop of one and dump it on the other and they'll go to war with each other. We've done that before. There's different solutions you can use with borax and things like that for poisoning in them. But then you got to worry about pets and other things like that. Mm -hmm. So typically our approach with ants has been that, um, you know, they do a lot of good in the garden. Obviously fire ants are a different story. You got to be careful there. 
but we just kind of move them around with the boiling water until they're out of the area that they're being annoying in. Um, also, ants can be an indicator, again, not fire ants, but just ants in general can be an indicator of things like aphids. So if you uh, get rid of the aphids, sometimes the ants won't, you know, won't stick around. Yeah. Um, but again, just the boiling water trick has been the biggest thing that we've done. Looking through questions. It's hard to like do this and look I know. at questions. I don't, now you know how hard it was yeah. when I was trying to do this myself. <laughs> We haven't answered your question again. Throw it, throw it back in, please. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I will say too, if we don't get a chance to answer a question, or if you're watching this after the fact, because this is recorded and posted later too, um, make sure you guys check out Growbot because you can ask Growbot like any questions, um, any gardening questions, and it is super helpful and gives really great responses too. I use it all the time for me too. <laughs> Do you remember corn worms out of the app? I might need to pull up the app and review on Ooh. that. Um, I'm thinking that BTK the uh, yeah, is a spray I, that you put on corn, but let me. Pull I don't it up. remember. It's been. I we haven't so grown I'm corn. So pulling up the app people. and going to the critters section right here. <laughs> Old fashioned screen sharing. <laughs> and then I'm going to go to corn borer right here. And it gives me the treatment options here. So, uh, yeah, BTK is a naturally occur occurring soil bacteria that you can spray on the plant, and it sickens the caterpillars and kills them. It's not a chemical or anything like that. It's a naturally occurring bacteria that targets caterpillars. And we use that for pretty much all of our caterpillar problems. We use it on broccoli and uh, kale and all of that as well. So that's what you can do with your corn is to spray BTK worms. on it. Companion planting is also going to help. I recommend checking out the Three Sisters way of growing corn. That will help with corn worms as well. Yeah, and there is a section in the app too for companion planting. So if you do go into, into corn and pull up friends, it'll show you all the different plants that are helpful for corn um, to help like repel pests and helpful for different reasons too. Mary has a good comment here about grow bags with potatoes. That's one of our favorite ways yes. to use smart pots is with potatoes because it makes harvesting very easy. You can just dump it out. And then if you have kids, it's like an Easter egg hunt and they mm -hmm. go through and find all the potatoes. It's fun. They love it. Yeah, I love it too. It's an it, event. Is, it is fun. We go through and just it's an event around pull here. out all of the potatoes. The kids get very uh, competitive about who can get the most potatoes. And <laughs> it's a lot going on. Looking. Okay. Do we use a greenhouse or a hoop house? We have used hoop houses a lot okay. in the past. And we will be using them again. I, I'm looking to build a greenhouse. Again, I'm not the most handy person, but I think I can build a, a greenhouse. Um, so that's on my list of things I would I like can. to build. <laughs> <laughs> I got a new nail gun, so I just want to build everything in the world right now. So, um, so yeah, it's something we would definitely use if we had. I think they're great to have if you have access to have one, definitely. But, you know, the hoop houses are things you can build on your own, pretty cheap and easy. We've done that with just PVC pipe mm -hmm. and, and plastic. Um, I'll post a link to, to one of those. We have videos of all about yeah, how Yeah, I have videos that. of how we built ours in our garden. Yeah, they're most useful for trying to overwinter things. Uh, we were not good gardeners this fall, and we started our entire garden over over this winter. So we don't have anything to overwinter, but next year we will. So well, we also like moved and all of that too. So we <laughs> Yeah, and had two babies. There's a lot yeah. going on. Yeah. Um, but check out our Instagram cause we're documenting everything about how we're building our new garden and showing all of it. And, um, I'm very excited about this spring because we're going to grow so much stuff and we're going to have so much stuff to show. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. I will say we did have the one year old going through and she was inspecting all of our work. So yeah. it was a funny little video <laughs> that was posted. You guys need to check out. <clears throat> all right. Well, let's go ahead and pick a winner now thank you everyone for asking your questions remember growbot if you don't have uh if you have more gardening questions download our growbot app and um ask it questions and share it with your friends please um yeah we got a lot of exciting stuff coming soon with growbot too it's just mind-blowing i cannot wait to to start getting it into your hands and we also have a new seed to spoon update too that's coming out this week a lot of stuff we're doing there so exciting stuff going on we're ready for the spring Trying to get everything <laughs> perfect for the spring. All right. So our winner is Arledge. Hey. 
Congratulations. So all you need to do is to email us at info at seedtospoon.net and we will get you all set up for your free one year premium access. And I hope that you like it. All right. Yeah. Any other questions? Let me look through and see. Mm -hmm. I don't think I missed any. That's possible. If I did throw them back in chat. Yeah, like I said, after the fact, if you have any questions, you can either ask Robot or you can also post them again, too. And um, I usually try to go in here and uh, and answer as many as I can. And we'll be back. When's our next webinar? Um, we're going to be doing them weekly starting in the first week of January. So pretty much everything that I'm going to be doing in my garden or preparing for my garden, I'm going to be doing a webinar about. So the first week in January, we're going to be starting up and doing it every single Tuesdays. So we're changing days up a little bit. Um, but it's going to be every single Tuesday starting in first week of January. I think that first week... I don't know if I have my phone on me. I was going to look up what it was about. I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it was just about overall, like getting started in beginner gardening and stuff like that. So, yeah. All right. Well, awesome. I don't see any other questions. Thanks everyone yeah. for joining us. This and was make fun. Sure, make sure you join, um, follow us on social media too, because I'll, I'll post reminders about the webinars as well and, um, and remind you guys about it too. So you'll join us. A uh, question here from Cindy. So we actually, in the app, it does have a section in there for indoor seed starting. So that would be the same as greenhouse or tunnel. Just go off that indoor date and that should apply as well. But if there's any other features we can do to make greenhouse growing or anything like that better, love to hear it. Yeah. One more question we'll sneak in. Um, <laughs> onions in, in Oklahoma. So traditionally, uh, most people plant their onions uh, in the spring, early spring. It's like kind of a Valentine's Day is kind of the around that time is when a lot of people plant onions because they buy them as transplants. So they're either bulbs or little sets that are already grown out and then you transplant those. If you wanted to start your onions from seed, then you could probably like now's probably a time to still get it in, depending on how the weather goes, you know, how we could have a snowstorm and Mary, you're from Oklahoma. You know how it is around here. We could have Alaskan weather for a few weeks. We could have Hawaiian weather for a few. We don't know what it's going to be. So um, it's always flip flopping around. Yeah, garlic too. You could probably sneak it in still too. In yeah, fact, as long as the ground is still workable, for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's all. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Appreciate Thank you so much for joining, everybody. And Bye. we will see you the first week in January. <laughs>